So today we're going to talk about a stock that crashed 30% in one day yesterday. I'm going to take a look at this stock, see what went wrong, what caused the news and if it's a buying opportunity. I know a few of you guys requested this one in the comment section so I hope this video is useful. I know there was also a bit of a demand for a SoFi video so I'll see if I can either get that in maybe today and try to do a double upload, it depends how busy I get or maybe tomorrow I'll see what happens. But today we're going to take a look at this stock that crashed 30% so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you could just smash that like button for me putting in this time and sharing this information with you guys as always. Subscribe if you're new around here. And let's get started. So this stock is Triple Eight Holdings. It's on the London Stock Exchange, and you can see here from where it closed on Friday, the stock is down 31%, taking a mega drop right now. And I'm pretty sure you probably would have heard of this company. They run 888 casinos, poker, sport. They also have a few other companies like William Hill, and we'll talk about that actually, that acquisition they made in a little bit in a little bit more detail. But they're pretty well known, and they've been expanding through the UK and also into Europe as well. Now this company was actually doing really well if you look at the moves that we're making in the 2019 maybe to 2020 I think that's maybe where it went a little bit wrong for the business but in that period of time they were making some good expansions into other countries and you look at the financials the financials were doing okay they were making some good moves the company was pretty impressive online business model only so they had very good gross margins and yeah the company was in a really good place but then from around about 2019 2020 unfortunately this company has took a turn for the worst and that comes a little bit obvious when you look at the share price and you look at the deterioration of the share price through 2021 so what has gone wrong for this company well the main thing is management management can make or break an investment and unfortunately in the case of 888 holdings management broke the investment they had a ceo change they had a CEO change where he came in as the CEO. He was originally the chief operating officer and then he came the CEO in 2019 on January the 24th. And from this point, unfortunately, it's very obvious that the company started going downhill. Now there's been a few things that have been out of their control. For example, the Gambling Commission has been putting new rules out there that has made it a little bit harder for UK casinos and sports betting platforms to make money. However, some of the problems that they have had have been self-inflicted. One of them, for example, was that 888 got fined 9.4 million after customers lost thousands in the pandemic. And they've had a couple of histories of having fines of 888, but this was a mega fine that did really affect the profit, profit recently. And then there was also another really strange move made by 888. They agreed to buy William Hill. Now they didn't just buy William Hill, they only bought William Hill, the European business. Now when you're an online platform that 88 has always been and you've got good gross margins, I have no idea why you want to go buy this. <laughs> I, the bin bags outside the uh, shop a little perfectly. The physical retail locations just do not make sense for a company that has always been in an online platform making good gross margins and then you go buy these. I don't know why. Unfortunately, retail betting shops are maybe unfairly, but are associated with a bit of rundown areas, not place that you want to be going into, especially when you look at a lot of the younger generation that are coming through. A lot of the younger generation don't really want to go into the physical retail locations. They're more happy to just go on their phone and use their phone if they're going to the casino or if they're wanting to do sports betting. So buying something with physical locations does not make sense for the future and especially when your whole business model has been built around the online side. The worst thing is that they bought the European business for 2.2 billion. This was crazy because you look at 88 Holdings, look at the market cap today. Obviously there's been a bit of a drop there but even still the company is worth 334 million and then you go and buy a massive purchase of 2.2 billion. And the thing is, is that when you look at what Caesars originally played for William Hill, so Caesars bought William Hill, wanted to keep the US part of the business and then sold off its European business. Caesars bought it for 2.9 billion. So basically Caesars overall only paid around 700 million for the, the US platform of William Hill and then sold the rest of the European business off to AA. And the thing is, is this is what you wanted. 
the the actual US part of the business is the one that makes sense. We we've talked about this on the YouTube channel before on companies like DraftKings, for example. The US sports betting business and casino business is growing huge, and it's going to grow huge in the next five years, ten years potentially. And you look at what area would you want to be involved in is the US part of the business, not these European classic retail stores. And that's clear when you look at the last full counts of William Hill and the retail locations dropped massively on revenue. Now, obviously there was the CV situation, so take that into consideration. But the part that was growing was the US platform. The US operations saw revenue increase by 32% to 167 million. This was the part of the platform that 888 should have been going after is the US growth. And someone like Caesars must have been laughing at 888 Holdings that they managed to flog off this dead part of the business and get 2.2 billion from that business. And then they get to keep this fast growing US part of the business that is the most exciting part. And 888 got robbed and it was a, one of the most horrible acquisitions I have seen a business make on the public markets. And then the worst thing is after making such a horrible acquisition, the company then had to go raise a ton of money. So they had to go raise 500 million by issuing new shares. Now the problem is, is your market cap is 340 million. Once again, take into consideration it has been on a big drop, so it was more at the time. They were issuing nearly the whole market cap in shares onto the market to pay for this, this terrible acquisition. And you can see here, the market capitalization was 77 million at the time. We're getting towards nearly 70% of the market cap at the time, starting to get issued in new shares. So you got diluted crazy as a shareholder and picking up a awful investment. And this was just another shocking decision from management team. So we saw them getting fined massively. We saw them making crazy acquisitions paying crazy prices for it, then diluting shareholders massively, and you're looking at this management team and you are generally questioning some of the decisions that they have been making and what the CEO was doing at the time. And then we got the news yesterday that came out which the CEO is going to step down immediately and certain VIP activities have been suspended inside the company. They said that following an internal compliance review, it had come to light that the certain best practices have not been followed in regard to KYC, Know Your Client, and AML, Anti-Money Laundering Processes for 888 VIP customers in the Middle East region. While further internal investigations are underway, the board has taken the decision to suspend the VIP customer accounts in the region effective immediately the board currently estimates that the impact is less than three percent of groups revenue should the suspensions remain in place based on the board's current understanding and this is what led the ceo to leave straight away so obviously there's some serious issue going on here and especially for the ceo to move away now i think with the combination of how badly this company has been running the last two years or since he came the ceo and topped off with this this is never positive. My worry is, is when you see something like this and the CEO straight away resigns, sometimes issues like this can open a can of worms. And this could be potentially the first thing that you start seeing and then we start seeing a load of other issues that have come to light inside the company. And that's maybe why the, the executive chair has straight away reacted with saying, look, you've got to go because they start seeing a whole load of problems inside the company. So this is obviously an issue here as well as how badly this company has been managed in the last few years. But I would also be very worried that potentially we could see some other issues start coming out the woodwork now after this has been revealed. Now the bad management did leave to lead to the company having to stop its dividend, which is also another issue that happened here. And I've got to say, you know, normally you do look at share buying in the insider as a positive but clearly this is an example of when you see insider buy-in, sometimes it's not always positive. For example, you can see here this, the former CEO did buy some shares that was worth 40,000 on the 18th of October, 2022. And previous to that, the chairman of the board picked some shares up on the 23rd of September. So quite often this can be viewed in a, in a positive light. Oh look, the CEO and the chairman are loading up shares. It's a really good opportunity. And this can show you that sometimes inside of in buying cannot be the guarantee that the company is going to turn around from here. 
and you can see that it's got a lot worse for this business since this has happened. Now quickly looking inside the business, you'll be able to see here that the company is going to have a massive boom in revenue. Obviously that's caused by the William Hill acquisition, but you can see here they are going to drop to a loss. That's obviously to do with the William Hill acquisition and as well as the fine that, we, that they encountered that we were showing earlier. But what I was quite impressed to see is that analysts are expecting a revenue downturn in 2023, but they are going to get back to some form of profitability. But when you look at the 2024 numbers, uh, 2.3 billion and 107 million in profit, and in 2025, 2.4 billion uh, and 189 million in profit, they are some very high numbers. For example, if they were to hit the numbers in 2025, that would put them roughly at one times earnings or one point something earnings to closer to two times earnings, which is you know unbelievably cheap. And even on 2024 numbers, it would put it somewhere around a three times earnings, which obviously would be incredibly cheap. So you can see here, analysts might update these in the next few days, but at the moment, analysts are, when you're taking the next 12 months into consideration, when you get two, three years down the line, if they hit the numbers that analysts are actually forecasting, this could have, this could actually be an undervalued stock if you're fancying a bit of a turnaround play after all the issues that they've currently had. So overall, in my opinion, I think this is a big example of management make or breaking your investment and they did break it with the current CEO at the moment. He has done a terrible job of managing this company through, through the fines, bad acquisitions, diluting shareholders, and then now the current money laundering issues that are going on. Now, when you look at the analyst forecast, they're obviously expecting things to turn around in the future, but as we know, analysts can be wrong, and that's an issue. When I look at the moment of this company, for me personally, I would be not touching this company at the moment because of how badly it's been managed, and I believe that potentially with the issues that have recently come up, sometimes they can open a can of worms where you start finding more and more issues inside the company and I would definitely be waiting to see if anything like that came out, especially around the how legit the financials are. Now obviously people are saying this as a bit of a turnaround opportunity or could it be a turnaround opportunity? And maybe it could be, but I think there's many things that need to happen before I would even consider taking that risk. The things that I would be considering is how they manage that William Hill acquisition. I still think that's a massive burden on the company. I also would wait for the new CEO to be coming in and see how they are and who they are. I would also be looking at the issue at the moment of the money laundering and do they resolve it and do any more issues come up. And then I would like to see potentially 12, 24 months down the line if where we see analysts are forecasting at the moment, if they start moving towards their numbers because it's easy for analysts to say they're going to get there but for them to get there is another question when they've got all these issues on at the moment. So for me, this is a company I would stay massively away from at the moment and if I was to consider it as potentially a turnaround play, I would personally be waiting at least at least 12 months into 2024 and potentially even then I think that might be too soon. It might be a stock to add on to a watch list and come back in maybe a year and a half's time and see how the company is doing after these major issues that it's had from really bad management recently in the last four years. So I hope you enjoyed the video on this company. If you could hit the like button, if you're new, subscribe. And if you are on the Patreon, just let you know, I just posted the three new buys that I made this week. So go check them out. And if you do want to see them buys, link is in the description to see them. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in a bit.